I love my, my church family. I love you guys. I love you enough to, to continue to, to talk this morning about something that we talked about last week and, and something that I think is a, is a problem not only outside of the church, but it's a problem in the church. I think it's a problem that generates as you look around it's a lot of, lot of empty seats. Now, some of these folks that sit in these seats, we, we know where, where they're at. We know some are, are traveling and working and different reasons why they couldn't be here today. But we also know that there are those out there that maybe they've drifted away from God and their, their relationship is, is not what it, what it once was. And maybe even for those that are even here today, maybe, maybe you've been here every Sunday, you're here every Wednesday, you're in, in, in the small groups, you're you're involved in everything there is, but, but maybe there's a struggle you're dealing with. And this morning, I want us to, to continue to, to talk about breaking free from the strongholds of sin. You see, Satan wants nothing more than to destroy your witness. Satan wants nothing more than to destroy your walk and, and, and affect your, your relationship with God so that you can't, you can't be as, as effective for God as you could be without these... Uh, these strongholds that the Satan goes up and, and sets up in your life. Last week, we, we took a look at the victory of Jonathan, which was David's brother, had over a, a giant who was taunting Israel. This guy had six fingers on it, each hand and, and six toes on each foot, and he was a giant. Can you imagine going to battle with something like that? But he defeated him. They killed him. We equated that to, to even what it would be like... Uh, to be wrapped up and grabbed hold of by a big old giant anaconda that's just squeezing and you just can't get loose. That's what this sin is like. That's what a stronghold sin that, that Satan goes up and, and sneaks his way in, into your life. And folks, we, we need to see, see some things that, that God has for us. And again, if you weren't here last week, that was out of 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 20. But one of the things that Satan will give you as a lie that we talked about last week is those strongholds, they, they seem too strong to, to break. And because those strongholds seem too strong to break, another thing that happens is, is this giant, maybe you're, you're facing that giant, you begin to, to lose hope. You begin to think that you can't, you can't defeat that giant. And then as we closed last week, we talked about how we had to Get our eyes off that giant, put our eyes on Jesus. Folks, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer to, to overcoming sin. Jesus is the answer to overcoming Satan. I, I love that, that song, Same Power. And that song talks about the, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the power that we have. And that's the power of, of Almighty God. I promise you, if there's something in, in your life that, that you're dealing with, understand today that, that you can overcome it. You can overpower it. It's the power of God. I, I refuse to, to just sit back and, and watch Satan continue to, to reach into families, and, and, and right here in this church, and reach into families and, and to destroy families. That's what he wants to do. Satan doesn't want you to be happy. Satan doesn't want your, your family living for God. This, this intertwining that Brother Dwayne's talking about and how people are, are, are coming to know one another and knowing that they may have already known them, that, that, that we're seeing um, God work through families and different members of families uh, getting saved. We see it start with one, and it just starts working its way through. Satan don't like none of that. But it's the power of God that defeats all that. So this morning, I want to continue talking about that. I want to talk about this morning the idea of that maybe the way that stuff happens is, is we've let Satan sneak in. Man, you'll know he's a liar. He'll lie to you. He'll convince you it's okay. He'll convince you nobody will know. He'll convince you it's not a real problem. And he'll sneak in and you'll let him in. And before you know it, he's, he's come in and he's set up a, a stronghold in your heart. And then you begin to have this, this sin that you just, you just feel like you can't defeat. I want to talk about that this morning. We're going to, we're going to look in Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 20 through 32 there. It says, But ye 
have not so learned Christ. If ye so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, they put off concerning the former, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. We look at these, these verses. There's a, a couple I want us to, to focus on first that I think show us a, what it really means to have that, that strong whole sin in our life. Verse 27 says, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. And in verse 30 says, and, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Now, the, to me, these are some pretty powerful verses. And, and to me, it's almost frightening to think that, that we as Christians, we who have placed all of our faith, we believe in all of eternity and the security that we have in, in Jesus Christ, and yet that, that we would give place to the devil, we would have to be told not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. But folks, we do. We, we, we give in to the, the cunning and, and, and the lies of, of Satan, and he comes in and, and he sets up, heart, sets up shop in our heart. And once he gets in there, it's, it's hard to get rid of him because we let him in. We gave him a place. How many of you here ever had a, a roommate? Well, we got two roommates up here right now. <laughs> y'all don't, don't be thinking bad about one another. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of roommate that you, you share a, a dorm room with at college. Or, I'm talking about the kind of roommate where maybe you let somebody move into your home and you, you rent them a room. You rent them space in your house and you let them come in. And when it starts, man, they seem like the, the greatest person in the world. It's a good idea. It's going to help. Man, this is a benefit. They come in, they're paying their bills, and they hadn't been there any time, and their true colors start to show through. They stay up all night listening to, to loud music that you don't like. They leave trash everywhere. They're, they're slobs. They get into your business and, and start to try to control your life. Okay, well, maybe you college roommates do that. I don't know. But the difference is here in, in this situation is you've let this person move in. You've contractually obligated and given this space to them. They're paying rent. They now have a, a legal right to be there. I mean, it's, it's frustrating. You can't get them out. It's causing you problem after problem after problem. Almost every single day, someone calls the police department with, with that kind of problem, and, and they want these people just thrown out. Well, they've given these people a, a legal place to stay. They're paying their rent. They might be terrible, but they've actually even paid their rent. So unfortunately, we have to refer them to the court process, and then the courts get involved. And only when a judge decides that it's time for them to go do they have to leave. Only when that legal right to that, that room, that space, is taken away, do they get evicted? Do they have to move out? And often that, that comes through, sometimes even through force. Sometimes that means a, a constable or, or sheriff's deputies may have to come out and, and physically remove them. Which is a good thing because you might not have been able to do that on your own. You know, I, I share that part 
because that's a lot, a lot like what it's like when we let Satan move in and set up shop. Man, he gets in there, and that sin that brought him in that we let sneak in, it seems like the, the greatest thing in the world, and it's good, and it's fun, and it's exciting. Y'all know that S Satan will make you think that, that sin is the most wonderful thing in the world. And before you know it, he's got in, and, and man, he's set up, and then you begin to realize, <laughs> man, he's got to go. He's got to get out. All these things that he's doing are, is ruining my life and causing problems. It's ruining my marriage. It's ruining my home. It's ruining my job. It's ruining my witness for Christ. He's got to go. But you can't just throw him out because you gave him a, you gave him a place. You let him go in and, and set up shop. He's running rampant. Well, I think through these verses that we have read, we see that there are uh, just like we have to tell these people on the phone, explain the, the core process through them, there are some steps that, that we can take that, according to God's word to, to get rid of Satan, to tear down his, his strongholds. And the first thing I, I want you to understand, and I said it last week, and I say it week after week after week, but the first thing, it starts with repentance. It starts with repentance. And in verse 22, it says that you put off concerning the former conversations, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. To put off means to, to put away, to, to be done with, to, to get rid of it, to confess it to God, to repent. If you have some kind of sin in, in your life where, where Satan has snuck in and took over and, and you're trying to get rid of him, again, I said it right up here last week, I can't tell you in my time as a Christian the number of people that I have talked to tried to witness to, and they say, you just don't understand. There are some things in my life that, that I've got to take care of first. Well, you've got it backwards. You see, you don't take care of those things. Satan does. That's wrong. Jesus does. Jesus takes care of those things. Satan is the one that's, that's destroying you. Satan's the one causing the problems. Matter of fact, Satan's the one lying to you and convincing you that, that you can take care of it on your own. You've got to repent. You've got to come to a point where you're willing to, to turn away from that sin and to confess your sins to God. You've got to come to that point where you say, you know, I, I realize I can't, I can't do this on my own. I can't get him out. I let him in, but I can't get him out. And don't think he doesn't fool you. He'll make you think you've gotten, you've gotten rid of him. He'll make you think that you're done with that sin forever. And man, sometimes it's weeks, days, sometimes it's months later. There it comes again. He never moved out. He's just been running around, and you didn't see him. But we have to repent. We have to, to take that, that sin and, and say, I'm done with it. We have to turn away and confess it to God. Then we have to have resistance. We have to have repentance and we have to have resistance. In verse 27 there it says, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Again, you've, you've given him a place when this sin came into your life. And if you have unconfessed sin in your life, Sin that you haven't repented from, sin that you haven't taken to God and asked for forgiveness, then you're still giving Satan that legal right to be in there. He's still got that old rental contract. He's still got that spot. Folks, we have to, we have to call sin what it is and call it sin. And we have to confess it. We have to confess it to, to God. When we begin to confess it to God and, and, and take it to him, that, that begins to increase our, our resistance. And then next we see renewal. We have to have renewal. In verse 23 it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and, put ye, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see, we're... We're never going to stop giving Satan, Satan ground. We're never going to stop grieving the Holy Spirit of God. 
until we come to a point of, of repentance and resistance and renewal. This morning, I want to ask you, are you ready to put it away? Are you ready to evict Satan? Are you ready to say, he's got to go? And by the power of Almighty God, are you a, a willing this morning to allow God to, to start working that out? To allow God to begin to, to renew in you? If we look at verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. That starts a, a series of, of different sins there that are given to us to, to see that these can, things can uh, exist in our life. Like I said, when we have unconfessed sin in our life, that, that opens the door. That gives the invitation. That begins to give Satan that right to hang out in there and to run rampant and to wreck your life. And right there we see that God's word says to, to put away lying. Folks, it's my prayer this morning that every single one of us would stop for just a moment. Stop thinking about that person you just thought about when I mentioned a liar that, you know, we all know that person that, that just can't talk for telling the truth. But I'm telling you this morning, I want you to examine your own heart. I want you to ask God to examine your heart this morning. Folks, I'm telling you, if you're lying just a little bit, in God's eyes, you're a liar. Do you understand that this morning? If you lie just a little bit, it's a sin. God said, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Lying is not of God. Lying is of, of the devil's nature. And when we run around here, and, and even when it's that little lie, we lie here, we lie a little there, we lie a little, little it just pops up, and then it becomes easy. And then somebody else comes along and, and starts to ask us about what we lied about early. Now we got more lies. And that's not a reflection of Christ. That's sin. Today we got to confess that sin to God. We know that Jesus said that Satan is a liar. We know that he's the, the father of lies. And this morning, I just, I just want you to think, even, even that, that little one you told last week, do you want to live like Satan is your father? Or do you want to live like your heavenly father? Confess that sin to God this morning. Give it to him. Repent of it. Resist, resist the devil and let God renew you this morning. In verse 28, it says, Let him that st stole still no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good. <coughs> that he may have to give him that needeth. Folks, if, if there's stealing in your life, <clears throat> then you have unconfessed sin in your life. I'm not coming to steal anything. I'm getting a drink of water. Getting pretty, pretty serious this morning. You, you understand that, that God says to him, God's word says, sin is sin. Would you agree with that? Sin is sin in God's eyes. All sins are sin to God. And we understand and we see this morning that, that unconfessed sin opens the door for Satan to set up shop. So this morning what I'm saying is that if you... If you are stealing that 15-cent pencil, and I know at some places they put them out there for you to take them. They advertise. You go into a business, they tell you to take them. That's okay in some places. But when you go to where you work, and you get that thing that's don't cost hardly nothing, you go to your friend's house, your neighbor's house, and you get these things that are not yours. We all know what stealing is. So understand this morning, I'm not talking about the value. I'm talking about the act of stealing. Stealing is stealing. And this morning, if you, if you have that in your life, then you need to confess that to God. You want to throw Satan out? Confess the sin of thievery to God. 
And Luke 16.10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in that which is much. And he that is unfaithful in that which is least, listen, and he that is unfaithful in that which is least is unfaithful also in that which is much. Not saying that, that God's saying just because you stole a, a 15 cent pencil that you'll go steal a million dollars. I'm saying that God says stealing is a sin. And sin is sin. And today I pray that, that God convicts you, puts it on your heart so that you can repent. So that you can confess your, your sin to God. So that you can resist the devil. So that you can turn from your sin and so that God can, can transform you and renew you today. Again, I know many are sitting here saying, I don't, I don't steal anything. The only things I take are those things that they put out there for customers to get or employees to get. They tell us we could take them. Okay. I'm not a thief. I don't, I don't steal anything. What about you young folks? You guys uh, you don't steal answers on, on test. That'd be stealing. What about uh, those who may go around and, and spread gossip and talk about others? You know, church folks do that. My goodness. I think it started in the church. I think that's where people learned how to gossip. And you know, when you're spreading gossip and, and you're saying bad things about someone, you stole their reputation. That's thievery. Like I said this morning, I'm not here to just pick on any of them. I'm, I'm guilty of this stuff myself, but I'm saying this morning that through God, through the power of Jesus Christ in our life, we can overcome this stuff. What about Malachi 3? Eight through ten. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Folks, this morning in that one, I'm talking to you about, about tithes. That's something, that's something I don't talk a, a lot about because, man, I, I tell you, that's one way if a preacher gets up and, and talks about tithing and, and giving, man, folks that aren't sold out to the Lord, it makes them angry and, and they don't want to come back. Well, I tell you all the time that you know, what you give is between you and God. I never want to know what you give. I'm so thankful we have those boxes back there on the wall and that we don't pass a plate. So as your pastor, I'm not tempted to turn around and see who drops what. I'm human. If I see you drop a, a big old stash in there, it might make, make me want to treat you different. But praise God, I, I never want to know that. We have men here who take care of that. And they're not to share with anybody who gives what. I only know what's given when, when I see what's on a piece of paper. But I'm... Telling you right there, in Malachi 3, 8 through 10, if you want to know whether you're supposed to tithe or not, go and get into God's Word and begin to pray about it. And you can say that they were under the law and we're under grace. Well, do you want to be outdone by those that were <laughs> under the law? Then, then we are under grace. I want to give God all I can. My Bible says that all that I have belongs to Him anyway. He just gives it to me to, to glorify Him and see how I'm going to use it. Verse 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to you, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Everybody listen real close. I'm going to say that one more time. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It doesn't say don't be letting trash come out of your mouth in certain situations. It says don't let it happen at all. It basically says don't say it unless it's edifying, unless it's edifying Jesus, unless it's part of God's plan. Don't say it. Don't let anything come out of your, your mouth unless it may minister grace unto the hearers. You know, the opposite, opposite of of that talk, that, that corrupt communication, depending on which version you may have, yours may say filthy talk, but don't let, don't let filthy talk come out of your mouth. And how do you, how do you praise 
God with your mouth one day and the next day you sound like Satan himself. And a lot of times it's things coming out of your mouth that, that may even include these other sins. It may even be you gossiping about someone. Folks, if it doesn't, if it doesn't glorify God, there's no sense in saying that. We've got to come to a point where we quit, and where we quit using Satan as a, an excuse, where we quit using anger as an excuse, and you say, what? Well, I get anger, and I can't. Well, let's read the next one. You go on down there, it begins to, to talk about bitterness. Before we get into it, verse 30 again, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Bitterness. Man, you want to know what Satan looks like? Look at somebody that's full of bitterness. You say, why would you say that? I say, well, if I look at you and I know you, and I know that you're not full of, of humbleness and, and peace and joy, See, those are the things that, are, that come from, from Jesus. So when someone looks at you, they, they either see those things and they see Jesus in you or they see bitterness in you. When they see bitterness in you, they don't see Jesus. They see Satan. What kind of effect for the, the cause of, of Christ are, are, are you going to have running around with, with bitterness in your heart? And again, it's a, it's a sad thing that churches are, are filled with, with Christians with, with bitter hearts. It tells me that, that Satan has gone in and set up a, a, a stronghold, and they don't know how to get him out. And he's taken over. And if you're running around with, with bitterness in your heart, it leads to, to all these other things that are there, to, to wrath and anger and clamor and, and evil speaking. All those things come. It says they be, be put away from you with all malice. Folks, this morning, if you want to, glorify God with your life, if, if you want to make that impact in your, in your family, if you want to make that impact in your coworkers, if we want to fill these seats up, we've got to get rid of the bitterness. Understand this morning that your, your stronghold sins, the things where you've allowed Satan to come in and to, to live in your life will You've given place to Satan, and you're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. See, we've got to come to a point where we're willing to, to uh, evict Satan in such a way, not that he, not only has he moved out and he's not there anymore, but we've evicted Satan in such a way that we've given God the keys to every single room in our heart, that every single thing about us belongs to him. Don't just put Satan away, give it all to God this morning. Not one place that God don't have the keys to. So this morning, repentance, resistance, and renewal. And you can be filled with the Spirit of Almighty God. You can walk in the Spirit. You can be effective for advancing the kingdom of God. This morning, if you're here and God has put something on your heart through his word, through this time that, that you need to confess, give it to him right now. You ain't even got to wait until we start singing. Start giving it to God right now. Ask God to take it away. Take that sin away. Ask God to make you new this morning. If you're here today and, and you've never said yes to Jesus, man, what are you waiting for? God speaking to your heart today. I, I pray that you'll respond. Whatever it is that He's put on you, I pray that you'll respond to that today. Would you?